Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to go through my top 10 list of the best free software application for Windows 10 as of 2017. Um, so pretty much all of these are ones that I personally use, uh, starting with LibreOffice. So LibreOffice is really essential. If you don't use Microsoft Office as the paid Office suite um, that many Windows users would happen to use, LibreOffice is the best free alternative, in my personal opinion. It's got pretty much all of the same functionality you would expect out of Microsoft Word, the ability to create um, slideshow presentations, PowerPoint I think is specific to uh, Microsoft Office, to create uh, Office documents, equivalent of um, Microsoft Word functionality. Uh, then there's LibreOffice Calc for creating spreadsheets. Um, LibreOffice Base for connecting and managing databases. And essentially, it's just a free answer to Microsoft Word. Um, it was spun off of a project called OpenOffice, I believe, which is still around. But LibreOffice has taken that and made it uh, a more modernized, uh, user-friendly Office uh, package. So LibreOffice, really cool, totally free. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. Uh, next up. GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. So uh, if you've seen tutorials on creating uh, uh, photography um, type projects, like you take an image, you edit it, you apply some filters over it, or you want to create some thumbnails, anything like that, uh, GIMP is a really great tool for doing that. It's more or less the free answer to uh, Adobe Photoshop, um, allowing you to edit images, uh, create graphics, uh, web design, all that other kind of stuff. I would say the interface is a little bit trickier to learn than Photoshop, but it more or less has almost all of the uh, same functionality for free. So it's a really great tool. And it's also cross-platform if you ever want to go outside of Windows. Uh, next up, uh, and there are a lot of decent antiviruses like AVG um, out there and Panda uh, antivirus as well. But in my experience, uh, Avira has had the most complete package for a free security suite. And not only do you get an antivirus with it, um, but it also gives you uh, a system speed up tool. And yeah, you can upgrade to a, a premium version to get more features, just like with pretty much any antivirus. Uh, but just in, in the terms of how much stuff they try to give you out of the box for the free security suite, Avira is hard to go wrong with. Uh, if you're looking for something a little more lightweight, though, uh, Panda Antivirus has been pretty cool, too. Okay, so uh, number four on my list, Skype. Uh, if you like talking to people online or you like the idea of talking to people online, Skype is a really great tool to use for that. Uh, people use it in business communications. They use it for talking to friends. Uh, there's a good chance you've already heard of it, but if you haven't tried Skype out, I would highly recommend giving it a shot. Uh, your alternatives to Skype are going to be things like Google Hangouts, uh, which aren't bad. Um, but just being able to have that desktop application of Skype, it, it's really cool. It's very usable. Um, and uh, for talking from computer to computer or computer to uh, the mobile phone app, uh, it's totally free. Um, only You only pay if you need to like call phones or that kind of thing. Which is to be expected. I mean, you wouldn't get a phone, uh, like a phone plan for free. So why would you get the ability to call phones for free? Um, but yeah, in terms of just communicating between computers, totally free. You can do video calls too. It's a great tool. Uh, next up, 7-Zip. So um, if you need to extract certain types of files, namely .zip files or .rar files, 7-Zip is a really good tool for doing that. It can also create your own file archive. So if you want to compress a bunch of files into one 7z file or .zip file, you can go ahead and do that. And let's close that for a second. And um, it's a totally free tool. So unlike WinRAR, you can actually have WinRAR installed on your computer forever, effectively, because they never force you to buy it, but they do say that it's a free evaluation and you're supposed to buy it after 30, 40 days. So, um, if you don't want to shout out the money and you want to be using something that's totally free, 7-Zip is a really good tool for doing that, and I do recommend that. Uh, next up, Thunderbird. So uh, Windows also has a tool called Windows Mail, which is pretty nice as well, um, which is what I'm currently using. Um, but that's out of the box. So this is software you can actually download. 
Thunderbird is a tool that if I'm not using Windows Mail, I would be using Thunderbird. Um, it's it's a mail client where you can combine multiple email addresses into one tool. So you can see here that you can have one email account there, another one, another one. So if you do a lot of email, maybe you have a home email or a work email, you can put those both in the tool. Um, it also has calendar functionality built in. You can subscribe to RSS feeds and that sort of thing. Uh, so if you want to keep up to date on podcasts or news articles, that's something you can do in Thunderbird that you can't actually do inside of Windows Mail. And that's, of course, the Windows 10 Mail that I'm talking about. Uh, to get all that extra functionality, you have to use other tools. And yeah, Windows 10 has the calendar functionality. But if you kind of want it all in one tool or you just want something that is separate from Windows 10 specifically, maybe you're going cross-platform, Thunderbird's probably the tool for you because you can run this on uh, pretty much all versions of Windows, also Linux. Um, and I'm not 100% sure, but I would imagine it's out there for uh, Mac computers as well. Let's actually take a look there. Maybe it'll say um, Thunderbird, Thunderbird, Thunderbird. Features. Thunderbird Mac. Okay, let's just type that into Google. Um, Installing Thunderbird on Mac. Okay, there you go. Does exist. And next, Google Drive. So cloud storage is basically the name of this game. Um, Windows 10 will try to give you, uh, I think they call it Microsoft OneDrive out of the box. Um, of course, I'm a little bit biased towards Google products since uh, most of my emails are through Google. Um, if you want a cloud storage solution that's associated with your Gmail account, Google Drive is going to be the way to go for that. Um, going to drive.google.com, you use the exact same account for email and for uh, taking care of your cloud storage solution. Um, I think they have to give like 5 or 15 gigabytes out of the box for you to put your files there. So as long as you don't really need like uh, to store massive video files or something like that, the free version is going to be great. There's also an app you can download to the PC. Um, if you don't like Google Drive, though, uh, the Microsoft OneDrive is pretty decent as well, and there are a lot of tools that are similar for this kind of thing out there on the market. Um, oh, one thing that Google Drive does have, which is really cool, though, is Google has its own uh, set of uh, basically document creation tools on the web. So if you go into the web interface for Google Drive, you can write up uh, text-based documents. I believe you can create... Um, uh, tables or spreadsheets, kind of like you would in LibreOffice Calc and that sort of thing. So being able to create those documents on the web and just have them s saved straight into your drive is pretty sweet. Um, next up, VLC Media Player. So this serves essentially the same functionality as uh, Windows Media Player, Windows Media Player Classic, or uh, to an extent iTunes as well. Um, it's a really lightweight um package. It, it's the one I prefer to go with. Uh, usually no issues with speed. Uh, interface, pretty simple. Um, doesn't exactly look super sexy or anything like that, but it's fine. It rarely has any issues playing back video files as long as you to install the codecs like uh, CCCP um, or shoot, what do they call it? K-Lite codecs, I think is the other package that's out there. So, uh, in general, it's just my uh, media player of choice. Uh, if you don't like VLC Media Player, going with Windows Media Player, Windows Media Player Classic would also be pretty fine solutions. Uh, next up, Spotify. So, assuming you are in a country which actually uh, allows Spotify, which would be like the US and UK, odds are, while well, you're listening to my video in English, there's a really good chance you're from one of those countries. Um, or you could always use CyberGhost or another VPN in order to get onto there uh, as well. But uh, Spotify is a music player. It allows you to stream music uh, for free, ad-supported, uh, from many, many different artists. Uh, they, and a lot of new artists have, or lesser-known artists have been getting their music onto there. So you can even find some pretty obscure stuff to listen for free. Uh, just have to listen to a couple ads every half hour, and that's pretty much a small price to pay for unlimited streaming of music on demand. So, really cool music app. Uh, I do definitely recommend it, and they do have premium versions. Um, it, it's not too expensive. I think it was like three months for $10, or was it $10 a month, something like that. Uh, obviously, you can see here that uh, in the UK, you can get the first three months for uh, one pound. Um, but yeah, um, free service is great too. Uh, you just go premium if you want to add free. 
Uh, next up, Steam. So this is one of the main reasons uh, guys like me would even use uh, Windows to begin with, because um, on systems like Linux, you don't really have access to all of the same games that you do on Windows. So if you are pretty big into gaming, uh, Steam is going to be a tool you want to use. So it has an app associated with it, and what this app basically does is serves as a management platform for all of the game purchases that you've done. And Steam by far has the uh, most games available. They are always having sales for 50-75% off of um, games, even big title ones. Um, and uh, the tool allows you to also talk to your other gaming buddies and that kind of thing. So it's a really solid platform. Um, I, I would think, and I haven't exactly researched it immediately, but I'm pretty sure it's the biggest platform out there for PC gaming at the moment. Uh, I don't think uh, the other ones out there like Origin or uh, Uplay have anywhere near the same number of users or uh, sales figures. Could be wrong about that, I don't have data right in front of my face, but uh, given how much I know that pretty much all of my friends would use Steam, um, and that no one really talks about the other platforms, Steam is probably the way to go. Um, and uh, for the games that do work on Linux, you can actually install a Linux version, but um, it's far less than the games that are available to you on Windows. I think like one third of my games are actually playable on Linux, so that kind of hurts a bit. Um, and then next, number 10 here, and this is no particular order in the list, probably one that not everybody is uh, using, but a uh, team viewer. So if you have issues with technical problems um, and you have a friend or uh, someone who's going to professionally fix your computer, there's a decent chance that they might actually want to use team viewer to connect into your computer and help you fix your problem. So what TeamViewer allows you to do is to give somebody uh, basically a code and a password or uh, like an ID and a password, which will allow someone with that uh, ID and password to connect into your computer. And if you grant them permission to take control of your computer to see everything on screen, and uh, it really helps with diagnosing problems, but it can also be used to just kind of showcase something to someone else. So if you want, say, I uh, needed to explain what you needed for your next web project to someone and you wanted to show them some files or documents, uh, you want to do that remotely, you could use Skype as a tool for doing that. Um, TeamViewer would also be another option there, but it's, it's really useful when you want somebody else to remotely be able to take control of your computer for the sake of helping you fix some stuff. And that is a free tool, uh, at least for personal use. So uh, worth giving it a shot if you run into that kind of issue. Um, and then I just briefly want to mention Nine Night, probably for like the fifth time on my channel or something like that. So NineNight.com, a lot of these tools you can pick up here. Uh, basically, the idea here is you want to install a bunch of stuff at once. So you just put checkboxes on whatever applications you want to install. You get your Nine Night, um, you run the program, and without giving you any further prompts, it's just going to install all of these tools that you're looking for all at once. So it's a really good solution if you have multiple software applications you want to install. And as you can see, uh, they have a pretty complete list um, as far as free Windows applications go. So definitely check that out if you haven't done that already, especially if you're thinking of buying a new PC or upgrading to a new operating system like Windows 10 soon. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for my top 10 video on uh, the best Windows software that's available out there for free, uh, specifically to Windows 10. So uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future video content.